Drought is a way of life here, but this year it's brutal. These nomads are usually on the move in search of food. <laughs> but with ponds bone dry for the past few months and absolutely no rainfall, nobody's leaving oh, this good. water source. <laughs> Emergency water rations are in effect here in Tatuti. Canadian Barbara Wilson has never seen anything like it. I know I grew up on a farm and, and uh, I, I remember the stress on, on my father in years when there wasn't a lot of rain, but none of it compares to the, the absolute desperation of, of uh, the need for water here. Up to 10,000 people and their animals rely on this generator to survive. It's running around the clock, pumping water from 280 meters below the surface. Elizabeth Lilton moved to this remote village three years ago to live with the people she longed to help. Living in this place is very challenging. Uh, we have different culture and the climate is hard. Yes, Putting down roots in a hut like this one is a new concept to these nomads who have never farmed. As dry as this soil might look, it's actually packed with nutrients. Of course, there's plenty of sunshine here, so all that's missing from the equation is water. They have the land, uh, they have everything, but they don't have water. Now they are settling, building this kind of house. So they are cooking their food here and they are uh, harvesting crops. Crops are flourishing here at Alele Sabula because of this quarter million dollar river diversion. Finally, the grand opening. <laughs> Canals carry water to where it's most needed, cropland. But its true source is in Canada, where donated grain raised the money to pay for the project. What they say is if, uh, oh God, oh God, we pray that it rain in Ethiopia, but if it can't rain here, please let it rain in Canada. Ethiopian farmers make around $100 a year. Now, with irrigation, they're making 2000 more per acre than corn farmers in Canada. Crops grow 10 feet high and are harvested four times a year. I am the most happiest to see my people having such harvests, says the president of the Afar region, and glad to see them working themselves as farmers. In just over 10 years, the group from Westlock has funded 12 water projects just like this one. They are the real ambassadors of the kind of work that Canada is doing overseas, especially in Africa. And this is the first time I see a community that has been involved for millenniums in pastoral activities, now getting involved in agriculture and in irrigation schemes. And word is spreading. The Canadians are here, the humble beginnings of another irrigation canal. This is the center line yeah, of the cutwalk. Community members are buying in. It's sweat equity in motion. Villagers work for food and funding. It takes a lot of courage and uh, looking at the future, so we congratulate them. We don't do it under relief. We're not going into that where we're going to pile up some grain and people come and get a bag of grain. They've got to earn, earn that uh, funding, and uh, they do. We are fed up of food aid, so we want to cultivate the land and produce our own food. We have the vision to be stable rather than mobile. We have the hope that with the help of the Canadian and with the help of our effort, we'll uh, produce something that is concrete. The gravel along the riverbank makes perfect concrete for the canal. Many resources are already here. The people just need to be shown how to use them. Poverty is you lose your dignity. Uh, you depend on someone, you depend on the handout. Instead, they're getting a hand up. Also, they are dreaming that they are going to have a, a, a better life 
after a year, one year. These projects have never been more important as the government takes over prime land for its 35,000 acre and expanding sugar plantation, nomads have been forced from lush pasture land close to the Awash River into dry, unforgiving terrain. When that's how the rules work, a reliable water source built with the government's blessing and funded by Canadians is, as one man put it, a gift from God. The, the, the sort of situation that we're put in here, I guess we've been so fortunate in uh, Alberta. And uh, I think it's the least that we can do is to share those abundances with other people. There is a big change here. This is very big and significant change for us. Maybe they don't recognize the Canadians there. Maybe they can uh, think that this is simple. But this is a big change for these people. So I just wanted to thank them all.